Abba Yahuwah, I just want to come before your throne of grace right now and I just want to praise you and I want to thank you, Father, for this time. I want to thank you for the Shabbat and I want to thank you for your message, Father. I want to thank you for where you have shown us how important it is for us to understand the tests and the trials in the wilderness. And that in this life, we will have tests. In this life, we will have trials. But you have already overcome. And I thank you, my Father, because you are showing us through this message that even though we have had the trials and the tests that we go through, but in the end, there will be a victory. You said we overcame through the word of our testimony. There is no testimony without a test. If we are not tested, we will not overcome. And so my Father, I just want to praise you. And I just want to thank you. And I just want to bring glory and honor to your name. And thank you, Father, that your Shua overcame the very tests that they, that the Israelites overcame in the wilderness so that when the time comes that we are going to be confronted in our lives with many tests and many trials, that you alone are the one that will go before us, that you alone are the one that is going to be able to reveal yourself to us in the midst of the storm. We will not be void of a storm. The storm will come. But Yeshua rebuked the storm because the enemy will always bring storms in our life. But Yeshua rebuked that storm. And he said, peace be still. And the enemy had to flee. And so teach us, my Father, what it means to be able to submit to you. Then we can resist the enemy and he will flee from us. But many of us are trying to rebuke the enemy without submitting to you. And that is the key to it all. Father, we want to repent enough to be forgiven, but we don't want to surrender enough to be changed. We need to understand that we need to repent for us to receive your forgiveness. But if we do not surrender and obey, we will not change. And so I ask you, my Father, that you alone be the one that go before us, that you alone be the one to lead and guide, that you alone will be the one that will come and open up the mind of our understanding. Give us eyes, Father, to discern our tests. Give us ears to discern our tests. Give us that discernment within our inner man to understand the test and the trial because there's many people that I see it's a test, but they cannot even see that it is a test in their lives. So many people bow to the flesh on a daily basis and don't even discern the tests. But I ask you this day, Father, Give us eyes to discern a test. How will we overcome if we don't even know that we are being tested? How will we know? The Israelites didn't even know that they were being tested, yet they were being tested. Because you put before us life and death. And we are called to choose life. We are called to choose life life wow that life the Zoe we are called to choose to eat from the tree of life we are called to be able to walk the narrow path that says 
broad is the path that leads to destruction and many will be on that path. But narrow is the road. Narrow is the way that leads to life and few find it. Few, Father. If you say few, it is few that will find it. And that life is the life of the everlasting life from the tree of life which is the holy of holies and few will find it. So Father, I thank you for your word that you would open up my mouth and put your words in it that I am to speak, Father. That I will not speak of myself that I do not speak my own words, but that I only speak that which you have for me to say. Open up our hearts and our minds to receive, so that the seed does not fall on rocky soil, it doesn't fall on thorns and thistles, and it doesn't fall by the wayside, but it will fall on good soil to produce a harvest and to set your people free. I praise and I thank you for this in your sure's name. Hallelujah. So we were looking, we, have, we are looking at um, Matthew chapter 4. And in Matthew chapter 4, we see how Yoshua was to be tested in the wilderness because we were sitting at the River Jordan and there in the River Jordan, um, Father wanted me to be able to pray um, to, to, to receive for the because it, we, I was going to do the mikvah we are making our way up to Yerushalayim preparing ourselves for the ascension on the 40th day and then to prepare ourselves for Shavuot and the father had me go into the water and do a whole mikvah and there is the very place where Yoshua would have been mikvet by, Yon, by Yohanan the Immerser. And so last week we looked at Matthew chapter 4. And we read that straight after Yoshua was baptized, straight after he was mikvet, that he was led into the wilderness to be tried by the enemy. And we went through the first test, which was in verse 4, which was about ch turning bread, turning rocks into bread. And that's when he said that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Father. And then the devil took him up into the set apart city. So we are now going to look at the second test. And we had a look that we are lining up these tests with what is written in Deuteronomy chapter Deuteronomy chapter eight. So we're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and we are lining up this test with Deuteronomy chapter 8. And so the second test, he said to him, so the devil took him up and he put him, he took him and he set him on the edge of a set apart place, of the set apart place, and said to him, if you are the son of a Lua, throw yourself down. For he has, for it has been written, he shall command his messengers concerning you. In their hands they shall bear you up, so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Now, if we go to Psalm chapter 91, verses 11 and 12, this is basically where this comes from. It comes from Psalm 
91 verses 11 and 12 that says, He shall command his messengers concerning you. In their hands they shall bear you up so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. So he's taking the word. So you've got to understand that one of the things that we must understand, the devil can take the word and he can twist the word. And that's why a lot of the doctrines of demons that come, it's not because there's not truth in it. There will be a truth mixed with a lie. And that is what we've got to understand. He didn't blatantly go to Eve and say to her that, you know what? Did he posed a question. Did the father really say that you are not to eat from every tree in the garden? And at the end of the day, she says, no, he said we are not to eat from the one tree in the garden. But all the other trees we can eat from. So the devil will always come and twist something. And then when he twists it, he wants to bring the deception. And this is what we've got to understand. He brings the deception. He wants to deceive us. So we've got to understand that the word, many, many, many people, oh my goodness, if there's ever been a time that word is, is going forth, this is a lot of word going forth. You just need to put on YouTube and when you put on YouTube, you're going to get all, how many people having to speak the word. And everybody can bring the word and then twist it. And what I have found that many times what the false prophets do, somebody sent me something in this week and it was this prophet that was giving this prophetic word and the prophetic word was very accurate and it was just confirming what the scripture already says. But then he came with his own interpretation and the interpretation that he came with was when he then turned around and he, he asked the father, um, who are those that are going to be left behind? Who are those that are going to not go in this rapture? So you see, up until then he was giving all the things of what was going. And this young girl sent it to me and she was very disturbed because of what this man said. And you see, this is how they do it. They first, you see, you know... If you've ever been to a psychic, now, in my time before I was saved, I, I, I never really believed in it, in psychics and these people. But then one of my friends in the office where I was, where we were working, we were, I was going through a lot of difficulties. And then she told me, no, she's got this woman and she's very good. And, you know, maybe if I go there, she'll give me some direction in what I must do. And I mean, understand now, you're not, you're not serving the Father. You're not, you are in the world. And so when you're in the world, you want solutions and you don't know where to get your solutions from. So obviously, where do you go get your solutions? You're going to go and get your solutions from a psychic. Now, you know, it's exactly like what, almost like what the false prophets do is now what's just coming to my mind. <laughs> she first tells you truth. And now I understand how she tells you truth. She tells you truth because who is she channeling into? She's channeling into demonic spirits. And these demonic spirits know all about your life. They know what you've done. They know what you haven't done. They know all about your life. So she channels into the spirits and those demonic spirits are the ones that will tell her the things about your life. So what does she do? She sits and she tells you about your past. Everything that you've done, everything that's happened in your life. And like you stand there and you say, wow, how does she know these things? How does she know all of this? And then all of a sudden, when you then ask her about the future, then she tells you what you're supposed to do for the future. And at the end of the day, that's the guidance that's coming from where? From the enemy. But she's already trapped you. So in the beginning, when I first went to her, she said, you don't really believe what I have to say. I can sense that you don't believe it. Because my mother always told me not to do these things. I mean, I was brought up in a Catholic church. And my mother had always said, you don't go to these people. You don't believe in these people. You don't do these things. But now, I'm my own, I'm 
30 years of age, I can make my own decisions. And so I, I never been to one. And so when I went, the first thing that she was saying to me, oh, you don't really believe in what I'm going to say to you. So she needed to get me to believe her. And how was she going to get me to believe her? To start telling me about my past. And then she was going to start speaking into my future. And this is always what my testimony, this is my testimony of how I give to my testimony to people. I say, isn't that amazing? She knew exactly what had happened in my life. But she failed to tell me what was going to happen to me when I did what she told me to do. So when I did what she told me to do, she failed to tell me I was going to face a lawsuit. Yet she, was, she knew so much, she should have known that I was going to face a lawsuit. But that she didn't tell me. So you see, it's exactly how these demonic, these sometimes these false prophetic things come. They give you the word of the Father and then they bring, them, they bring their own interpretation. Then they say, Yahuwah said, this is what Yahuwah said to me. And then when I heard and he said, everybody that doesn't believe in the rapture will then not be part of it. And I thought, you've got to be joking. Where on earth is that written in the Bible? Where on earth is it written? It's not there. And this is exactly how the enemy comes to us to be able to make us believe in his lies. So he twists the word. He twists it. So now all of a sudden, this young girl that walks a path of truth, but listen to the prophetic word, now all of a sudden the prophetic word brings a twist in it. And this is the twist that comes, that then makes us believe them. Because why? You see, everything of what they've said has been confirmed as being truth, but then there will be one thing that is not truth, and then we believe everything, even if everything is now, even if the rest of what they're going to say is a lie, but then we believe it. And this is exactly how Yeshua is being confronted by the enemy. And he's saying, Yeshua said to him, it has also been written, you shall not try Yahuwah, your Elua. So you see, he's trying to bring the scripture, twisting the scripture to tell him, just jump from here. He's going to protect you. So do you see, beloveds, we pray prayers and then we take scriptures. And then we hold scriptures up to the Father and we say, your word says and your word says. And then we just think that it's a magic potion, that we can just use the scripture to, to him as a magic potion and he must do what I want. So we've got to be very careful in how we go about being able to be confronted by the enemy in what he does. So in this aspect, we look and we see here, he's being tested. So if we look, from verses 5 to 7, he said, the devil took him and then he said, he shall command his messengers concerning you. In their hands you shall bear, shall bear you up. So the Israelites were also tested in the wilderness. And where were they tested? Where are, we are not to question Abba Yahuwah's ways. We are not to question the work of his hands. We are to not strive with him. We are not to demand and command our way by bringing the scripture and holding it up to him so that we can have our way. If he chooses to put us through something, then it's his choice. Just like Job. He chose to put Job through his trial and through his test. And then what did Job's wife say? Well, curse Yahuwah and die. This is when the great falling away is going to take place. Beloveds, you must understand, this is now when the great falling away is going to take place. Imagine when you are standing and you are quoting a scripture. Now, I know this only too well because when I was on Mount Sinai and we were climbing and we were coming down, and as we were coming down the mountain, I was quoting scriptures. And I was quoting, Father, you will not let my foot, this very scripture, you will not let my foot dash upon a rock. 
You shall bear me up. You shall, and in their hands you shall bear up. And you shall not dash your foot against the stone. Father, you will not let my foot slip. You will not let my foot, my foot dash upon a stone. No sooner am I pre, if I'm praying this. And there I slip. And there I fall. And there I pick myself up again. And there I'm quoting the scripture again. Now, I'm quoting the scripture. I can quote the scripture till I'm blue in the face. Because am I quoting it, number one, out of faith? Because sometimes we don't have faith. But you see, even though I'm quoting the scripture, Father was taking me through a process. And the process is like the process of Job. You can quote the scripture to me, but if I'm going to put you through a trial and a test, you are going to have to endure, even though you're going to slip and dash your foot against a rock. You will get up and you will continue to trust me and you will continue to believe in me and you're going to continue to pray to me and you're going to continue to believe that I am with you. So that's why he says that just like Job, he was putting him through a test. And this is where the great falling away is going to come. We can quote Psalm 91 all we want. We can quote it all we want. But you see, everything of what the Father is doing in our lives is to mold us and shape us and become like him. And Job had a choice to make at the end of his life, at the end of everything. What was everything that the father chose to put Job through. And you know what? If the father did that with Job, if the father did that with his own son, then what makes me think that I'm void of any test or any trial that he's going to bring my way? What makes me think I'm going to be void of it? Because you see, the tests and the trials are what strengthens me. The test and the trial is what I have to go through to overcome. And all I can say to you, beloveds, whatever you do not overcome, you will write it again. That's it. That's why they were in the wilderness 40 years. Because they kept going around the same mountain, going around the same mountain, going around the same disobedience, that they were disobedient to the Father. And this is exactly what he is going to put us through. And that's why Job had a choice to make. Curse Yahuwah and die or be obedient. And he had to be obedient. And so why does the Father try us and test us so that we may be children that will be led by the Ruach of Yahuwah. And I can tell you now, that becoming filled and being led by the Ruach of Yahuwah, you can only be strengthened in your inner man when you have gone through the trial and the test. You will be strengthened in your inner man, in your soul man, in your mind, in your will, in your emotions, when you have had to go through the trials and the tests. And so, just because we quote Psalm 91, doesn't mean to say that we're not going to go through destruction. He brings the test to see how you behave in that test. He's going to test you to see what is your behavior in that test. How do you behave? What is going to come out of your mouth? What are you going to resort to? What are you going to do? So, at the end of the day, we can quote scripture all we want. He will save me. He said, he will throw yourself from this place, but he's going to protect you. He will give his angels charge over you. So, beloved, what is the Father trying to tell us here? You have to understand, a day is going to come that is ahead of us, that we are going to have to be given the choice whether we are going to bow to a beast system and we will be able to say, Oh, Father, you know what? I can take this thing, but I know you will protect me. Oh, Father, I can bow to this thing, but I know the blood of Yeshua is going to protect me. Beloveds, if we are going to bow to the beast system, we are already closing the door on what the Father is saying in Revelation when he says, come out from among them. Have nothing to do with them. See, what did Yeshua say? The enemy has nothing in me. The, the devil must have nothing in me. But you see, as long as I'm still 
not submitted to the Father, the devil has a doorway into me. Wherever the area is that I am not submitted to the Father, that is why he's going to keep testing you and testing you. The Father gave me a word. It was last year. And was it last year or the year before? Where he says, the very thing that you do not submit and surrender to the Father, that thing will become the idol in your life and it will destroy you. So whatever you do not submit and surrender to the Father, that thing will become the idol in your life that will destroy you. So is it financial? You know, like last week we looked at provision. Is it a financial test where the Father is going to test you in your finances? Man, those tests of the finances is not easy. But whatever it is that you're not willing to surrender to Him, to say, I'm not willing to go without this thing, I tell you now, that thing will eventually become your idol and it will destroy you. Because that's why he was tested in all these areas. So this is now the test of being spectacular. Well, I'll throw myself from here. I will put him to the test. I will put the father to the test. I will continue to be disobedient in my in, in my flesh, I will continue to disobey him. I will not submit and surrender to him. But yet I am the chosen, I am the bride, I am the anointed, I am the pointed. Beloved, I'm here to say to you today, you are listening to deceptive demons that is speaking nonsense in your ear. Because the bride is a very, very small remnant of people. It's not the broad. And it takes your surrendering, laying down, in those areas of where the Father tests you and tries you, it's not easy to walk a, a narrow path. And that's why he says, few find it. Because the narrow path is the path of flipsis. And that flipsis is persecution. It's going to be hardships. It's going to be trials. It's going to be going with, with hardships and trials that you are going to have to go through. But you're going to have to stand. You're going to have to stand. And you know, we are all being tested right now. Just on Thursday night, when was it? No, Wednesday night to Thursday, I was severely tested in my flesh. I was awake at half past 10. No, I went to bed, it was 10 o'clock. I was woken up at half past 12 with excruciating pain in my jaw, in my mouth, like an abscess that's coming up. It's not a tooth. The whole mouth pain. It wasn't just a tooth. It was like, you don't even know where it is. Is it at the top? Is it at the bottom? It was just pain. I don't even know where it came from. I woke up out of my sleep with pain. So I sat and I started to pray. And I started to pray. And I asked the Father, Father, please will you help me? And then I thought, okay, what is bringing this on? Because I've been battling this this. this the same battle. This is, what, this is a battle that I've been battling already for four years. What is going on? Now you've got to understand, I'm in time of fasting. So if it's time of fasting, then it's not time of being able to even think of doing anything to take away the pain. And now I lay there. Beloved, until half past five in the morning. Till half past five, quarter to six. I went and I sat down. I took communion. I sat down. I took communion. I started repenting. I started repenting for everything. I started forgiving people. I started repenting. I started releasing people. I'm forever releasing. I started repenting. I started repenting. Did I maybe speak something that I shouldn't have spoken? Then I started rebuking because now the day before on Wednesday I sat in front of how many people, prayed over how many people, you know, laid hands on how many people, then I thought maybe some demonic spirit has come on, upon me. And so I started repenting. I started doing all of this. Eventually, the pain was so bad that I sat there and I said, I can't do this, Father. I can't do this. I just cannot do this anymore. I cannot handle this pain anymore. And it was just too much for me to be. I said, Father, what do you want of me? What do you want of me? I don't understand what you want of me. Do you want something from me? What am I supposed to do for you that I'm not doing, that, that this is what's going on with me at the moment? Father, please, will you help me? 
because I was desperate. I just didn't know what to do anymore. And in the meantime, I've got the devil in my ear saying, you see, what's the point of you fasting? You fast. Where is he now there for you? Every single time you fast, this is what's happening. And eventually I was getting to the point of saying, you know what, I, I must just stop this fasting now already. But yet I was told by the prophet, because I'm preparing to travel to America, I was told by a prophet that before you go, you must fast. Water only seven days. So this is what I have to do. And the only time that it's not that you may have something is only when you take communion. The rest of the time, that's the only time. So that's what was my instruction. So I got the instruction. Now I'm trying to be obedient to the instruction. What do you think is going to happen? The devil is going to come against you. Because every time that you have to be faithful to the Father in what it is that you have to do, the devil is going to try you in the area of where you've got to be obedient. So what was the thought going through my mind? Well, what's the use? Every single time I do this, this is what I've got to go through. I can't handle this pain anymore. I just cannot take it. It's been five hours that I'm sitting with pain and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've repented and I've rebuked and I've done everything I know to do. And so I started crying out to him. What do you want of me, Father? What do you want of me? And he said, worship me. Just worship me through your pain. And I thought, the last thing I feel like doing now is putting music in my ear when everything of yeah, my jawbone, everything hurts. But put worship music in your ears. Because Elsie is sleeping. I can't go putting loud music here. This is the middle of the night. This is now quarter to six in the morning. Half past five. So I put the earphones in my ears and I start to worship. And I start worshipping. And eventually I fell asleep while worshipping. Half past six I woke up again with the worship music. I started worshipping some more. And I worshipped some more. And I fell asleep again. Half past seven, I woke up again, worshipping, worshipping, and laying down and worshipping. And then I thought, okay, Father, let me just take this music out and let me try and just sleep a little bit. And eventually by half past eight, I woke up and the pain was gone. Beloveds, do not for one minute think that you are not going to be tested to the point of where you can't even bear the test. We will be tested and we will be tried. But you see, the devil comes speaking in your ear. Well, you know what? What's the point of you doing this? Just, just let it go. Just stop doing what you're doing. It doesn't work anyway. Look and see. And then this thing of, why do I have to... I stand in front of all these people, I pray for all these people, and now maybe one of these demons came upon me. So, you see what I'm saying? All these things is the enemy wanting to stop you from continuing to do what the Father requires of you. And so that is why I'm saying, we have to understand that these, you know, that the, the, that the Israelites in the wilderness were being tested in the wilderness. And you see, when you can't take it anymore, what do you resort to? When you can't deal with it anymore, what do you resort to? To the arm of the flesh? Oh, let me resort to the arm of the flesh. Let me turn to something that I can do that's going to take me out of the place where I find myself. Because I don't want to be in this place of where I'm being tested and tried. Because it's too much. I can't handle it. So it was a case of saying, why don't you just go take a painkiller? I'm not even one to take tablets. I mean, I have gone through this without even taking painkillers. Because I don't want to take pharmacia. Just take a painkiller because you can't even sleep now. Well, beloveds, worship. And you know what's so interesting? I had to go through all of this. 
Now, if it meant it had to be for somebody else, now listen to this, how this works. So, I go through all of this. The Father tells me, worship is the key. Start to worship. So you see, when you find yourself in that place, see, when you pray, pray just lights a few light bulbs in a town. But when you worship, it switches on the whole light switch. Because when you worship, Father, he brings his angels to be able to come and to be able to fight on your behalf. What did they do when they had to take down the walls of Jericho? What did they do? They were, had they sent the worshippers ahead. They worshipped. And when they worshipped, the enemy was destroyed. The, 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 the walls came tumbling down. Did they go to any battle? No. So with, where did they win the battle? In worship. So anyway, these are the things that I know. I know these things because that's why, the, that's why the Father had to remind me of what I'm supposed to know to do, but wasn't doing. Because if you've got pain going over here, you don't want to now go put the loud music here in your ear because it's paining. So I had to get over all of that. So on Thursday, I did the teaching. When I was busy with the group talking at the end, there came a, um, a phone call. And I'm thinking, now oh, this woman wouldn't be phoning me. Why is she phoning me? She wouldn't be phoning me. Definitely not at this time of the night. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. She won't be phoning me. There must be something. Because I haven't heard from her for weeks so I knew something is up so I answered and she said I need to talk to you urgently Natalia I'm in Poland and I need to talk to you so I put down the phone I said to the people sorry I've got to take this phone call this is a prophet and I need to speak to her because she needs to she needs to talk but she says the father said I must phone you you've got a word for me I thought what on earth what word I don't know what she's talking about so anyway, she says, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I just knew I have to phone you. I'm about to do a huge assignment for the Father tomorrow. The Father's sending me to be able to go and break down huge thing that's going to have to be done. And somehow he wants me to contact you. So, and then she says, my goodness, you have no idea. The, the attack that I've been under, it's been test after test. And I've been, I have been going through such a difficult time and I had this thing come upon my body and then I didn't know what to do anymore and I started screaming out to the father and when I was screaming out to him and said what do you want from me because then I said to her, then afterwards I said I was in the same place crying out to the father saying, what do you want of me father what do, what do you want father what do you want of me and she says and so I said the same thing to him and the next thing I go to my he gives me a psalm and as I go open up that psalm my eyes fall upon a scripture Worship me. And so she says, then he told me to worship. So I said, wow, that's very interesting. I said, because yes, last night, I just faced a similar, well, not your test, the Jew, my test, which was also with pain and this and that and everything else. And when I cried out to him and I was screaming out and saying, Father, what do you want of me? Crying because I didn't know what he wants. And he said, worship me. She said, oh, I heard what I needed to hear. I now know what I need to do. I said, oh, what? She says, I needed confirmation. I know what I'm supposed to do for tomorrow. I know exactly what the Father requires of me. And she was about to go into a huge battle. And what did he need her to do? Worship. She needed to be worshipping. On her way, she had to worship. And who was she going with? A worship leader. So, this is exactly what the Father required of her. So, beloved. If we are not going to be in that trial. Now, did I have to go through all of this so that I could help someone else that was about to do a huge work for the Father that needed confirmation and didn't know where to get confirmation. But this is what she needed to be able to. She needed to talk to me who has just undergone a test. You see, your trial and your test becomes a deliverance for someone else. But you know what? We pray it away or we do our own thing. And this is why we don't ever get deliverance. And this is why we don't, fall, we don't get used by the Father the way that we should. Because why? 
because we're not obedient to him. He's got to know that he can trust you. He's got to know for him to use you, for you to become. Remember what this teaching is about. This whole teaching is about many are called for your chosen. For you to be a chosen one, you need to be a faithful one. You need to be faithful that he knows he can trust you with the things of his kingdom. You cannot trust people with the things of his kingdom that are not trustworthy. You cannot do that. He has to know that he can trust you. He has to know that you will be prepared to be able to surrender all, but you will be obedient to what he wants, no matter what. No matter what it's going to cost you, no matter what you're going through in your body, no matter what it is, you are going to be obedient. So, if we look now, let's go to Deuteronomy. No, let's go to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17 and we're going to read from verses 1 to 4. And all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of Sin, according to the mouth of Yahuwah and camped in Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. And therefore the people strove with Moshe and said, give us water to drink. And Moshe said to them, why do you strive with me? Why do you try Yahuwah? So you see, they were fighting against Moshe. But was Moshe the problem? Moshe was not the problem. They had the problem. And they were now fighting against who? Against the father himself. Because why? Because it says, therefore the people, because it says, uh, according to the mouth of Yahuwah. So the mouth of Yahuwah spoke. The mouth of Yahuwah spoke. And that which the mouth of Yahuwah spoke was, you are going to go into Rephidim. And now they are striving with him. Now, if the father has led them there, then the father is the one that's going to take care of them, isn't it? Absolutely. So, give us water to drink. And Moshe said to them, why do you strive with me? Why do you try Yahuwah? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moshe and said, why do you bring us out of Mitzrayim to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? <laughs> so you see, it was amazing because here I'm writing this test. And as I'm writing this test, it's the very message that I'm speaking. When I listen to my own Torah portion for today, the Torah portion of Tetzaveh, when I listen to that Torah portion, then I had to get my own rebuke. From my own mouth, I had to get the rebuke that you are no different to the Israelites in the wilderness, grumbling against the Father now in your time of desperation. And Moshe cried out to Yahuwah saying, what am I to do with this people? Yet a little and they shall stone me. So you see, this is how we will behave. Now, I share with you my walk so that you understand. I am not sitting on no pedestal and sitting over here and saying, wow, I've arrived. I'm on my pedestal. Can you see? Wow, I've arrived. No, no, no. I am just like all of you, writing my tests and then having to sit and be confronted with the very word for me to understand that I too am going to be able to have to overcome. And so the test is going to present itself and I've quoted everything, I've done everything, I know what to do, I've done everything except the one thing, I didn't want to worship. I wasn't worshipping. And then when eventually I said, what do you want of me, Father? Just worship me. And through the worship, the pain was gone. The Father took away the pain. Because you know what? I stopped thinking about myself and my pain and my issues and everything and stopped listening to the devil and his coming against me, whispering in my ear and, and being tormented by the devil and eventually put my focus on my king and just started to worship. And as I started worshipping, my spirit man came to ease and I was able to go into his shalom 
and was able to fall asleep. While praying in tongues, as I slept, I continued to listen to the worship music but pray in tongues. If we look at verse 7, verse 6 says, See, I'm standing before you there on the rock of Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and the water shall come out of it, and the people shall drink. And Moshe did so before the eyes of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the strife of the children of Israel, and because they tried Yahuwah, saying, Is Yahuwah in our midst or not? So this whole thing, this whole test, was he was being tried. And we are not to put the father to the test. We are not to try the father. We are not to put him to the test. You cannot turn around and say, in the days ahead, well, let me bow down to a thing that, you know, the, the who is going to give me, the world hell organization is going to give me, I'm not going to bow down to this thing and, and bow down to it to save my life, to save my family's life, to save my child's life, to save myself, and then say, but you know what? You are going to protect me. You will protect me. No. You can't do that. You can't do that. Because at the end of the day, he says, come out from among them. And the test is for you not to be able to give in to your flesh. So we've got to understand that these things come our way to test, to see whether we will be obedient or not. Because when the time comes and they're going to present you with a thing that if you take this thing, it's going to to be maybe the mark, who knows? Maybe it's the mark, whatever it is, I don't know. And this thing will come, and then you can say, well, you know, it's okay, I do it to protect my, I do it for the sake of my children. I do it, Yoshua said, what did he say? If you want to save your life, you're going to lose it. So you see, when the time comes, you better make sure that you know the word. You better make sure that the word is your only final authority because what you're sure had to speak up against the enemy was the word. And you better know that the word says, you shall not put him to the test. You shall not put Yahuwah, your Lord, to the test. And what does the word say? If you want to save your life, you will lose it. But if you lose your life for his name's sake, then you will save it. And that's the word that you ought to remember when the time comes and they want you to bow to a system. You can't put him to the test and say, oh, well, you know, I can do this and then he'll protect me. I will just take the blood and then I'm going to be protected. Beloveds, let's not be deceived. So let's go look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 as we look at our last one. Last test. Deuteronomy chapter 8, and we're going to read from verses 7. And it says, For Yahuwah your Lua is bringing you into a good land, a land of streams, of water, of fountains, of springs, that flow out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you eat bread without scarcity. So you see, we can be living in a place of where we have bread without scarcity, where he's going to give us the abundance. So we start to walk with him. So now you've got to understand, each test presents its own issue. Each test presents its own trial, its own test. So this is now when they are living in the land of plenty. So, a land in which you eat bread without scarcity, in which you do not lack at all. A land whose stones are iron, out of whose hills you decopper. And you shall eat and be satisfied, and shall bless your who your lure for the good land which he, gave, which he has given you. So you see, Father then starts to prosper us, and this is where a lot of people have fallen as well. So all of a sudden, Father starts to bless the person, Father starts to multiply, Father starts to give you financially, starts to bless you, spiritually starts to bless you. He gives you all the spiritual blessing, He gives you physical blessing, all of this He gives you. Now listen. 
be on God. Be on God is what he says. See, so, and you shall eat and be satisfied and shall bless your whore, your Lord, for the good land which he gave you. So, you even bless him for that which he's given you. Be on God. Lest you forget your whore, your Lord, by not guarding his commands. So, all of a sudden now, he's blessing you. You've been obedient. He's blessing you. And now what do you do? Now, all of a sudden, oh, in the time of the blessing, in the time of the wealth that comes your way, oh, all of a sudden, you have what you need. You don't need to trust him anymore. You don't need to seek him anymore. You don't need to be able to be obedient to him and to his ways. So he turns around and he says, you don't, you don't guard his commands, his right rulings and his laws, which I command you today. So then all of a sudden, you don't keep his commands. No, because now, oh wow, now I've got what I need. I've got everything that the world has to give me. Now I don't need to keep his commands. Lest you eat and shall be satisfied and build lovely houses and shall dwell in them. And your herds and your flocks increase, your silver and your gold are increased, and all that you have is increased, that your heart then becomes lifted up. Hmm. Then we become filled with arrogance and pride. So now understand how many of these men and women of Yahuwah, they all of a sudden start to walk in this prosperity gospel and now they start to receive everything that they need. And then their heart becomes lifted up and you forget your Hue your Lua, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage, who led you through the, world, through the great and awesome wilderness, fiery serpents and scorpions and thirst where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, in order to humble you and try you to do good in the end. So you see, he will humble us and he will be able to try us so that we will remember the good in the end. So all these things come our way in order to try us, in order to test us so that we will then be able to be humbled so that we understand that everything that he gives us is not ours anyway, it's his. You know, he could very easily say to us, well, you know what? I want you to give me 90% and you keep 10%. So what is his is his. He will try us in whether we are obedient to him or not. When he said to them, bring all of this to me, your contributions, bring me your silver, bring me your gold, bring me all of this, they couldn't turn around and say, well, you know what, actually, I don't want to give you my silver and my gold, Abba Yahuwah. That's mine. That's all mine. No. He had need of that which you have. But you see, this is where he's turning around and he's saying, I'm going to give you everything, but then be careful. Listen to what he says. And then you shall say in your heart, my power and the strength of my hand have made for me this wealth. Now, I hear that from a few people that, that, I have, that had nothing, that then all of a sudden, Father blessed them to be able to get a business or get whatever it was. And then it's their hard work. And then it's their hand. And then it's their power. No, 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 no. No. Father gives you the means to get the wealth. Father raises up kings. Father takes down kings. Father raises up kings. And he can destroy a king just like that. He can take everything away from a king. Just like that. He can strip a king just as much as he raised up the king, he will strip a king to be able to be humbled, to understand that they are not to become arrogant and filled with pride and think it's all mine. It's about my kingdom. It's about me and my kingdom. It's not about you and your kingdom. It's about him and his kingdom. And if we get to the place of where we start to think that our finances and our wealth and our um, even our ministry or the messages that he gives me or whatever it is that I all of a sudden think, oh wow, I've become so great. Let me tell you something. 
you are on a way to fall. Because understand something, the gift is his gift. It's his gift. Everything he gives you, it's he blessed them. He gave them everything. He says, but you shall remember Yahua, your Lua, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Who gives the power to get the wealth? The Father. In order to establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is today. So understand something. We've got to understand something. It's not our hard work. It's not everything that we have done that has given us the power to make the wealth. If we have been given wealth, if we have been given uh, um, resources, no matter what resources you have been given, whether you have been given, like in my case, maybe the Father has given me the, the resources to be able to open up the Word, to be able to break open the Word. Let me not look down on people that don't have that gift, because this is just a gift. It's a gift. It doesn't make me special. It doesn't make me that I have arrived doesn't make me think that I'm so special now because the Father has given me a gift. I just cannot look down on other people because that gift is not their gift. It's my gift. And so at the end of the day, it's the gift that I have that has been given to me so that I can help his people. That's the gifting that he's given. The gifting so that it's the gift the same as like he says over here. Listen to what he says. And then you shall in your heart. So he's already said to them. He said to them. Um, when And be on guard. Lest you forget your who are your lure. By not guarding his commands. And his right rulings. And his laws. Which I command you today. So then. When you're, when you, when, lest you eat and be satisfied. And build your lovely houses. And shall dwell in them. And your herds. And your flocks. And increase your silver and your gold are increased. And all that you have is increased. That your heart then becomes lifted up. So you see, then your heart becomes arrogant and prideful. The Father does not want an arrogant and prideful heart. And you forget your hua, your lua, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. So you see, you get lifted up. Because now the Father is giving you the giftings. The Father is giving you the wealth. The Father is giving you the prosperity. The Father is giving you everything. Because you're walking, you're being obedient to Him. And now He's blessing you. And then all of a sudden, you, get, you, you, you start to become arrogant in yourself. And this is why you are seeing, you see a lot of these, you know, men and women of Yahuwah. You're going to see many fall. You are going to start seeing many fall because he will bring them down. And he says, and you shall then say in your heart, so <clears throat> you shall then say in your heart, my power and my strength of my hand have made for me this wealth. No, no, it's not your strength. It's not your power. It's not anything that you have done. It's not even all your hard work. The Father blesses. The Father is the one who brings the wealth. And he says, but you shall remember, Yahuwah, your Lua, for it is he who gives you power. It's his power. It's he who gives you power to get wealth in order to establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is today. So it's part of a covenant blessing. It's not something that we become arrogant about. So now what happens in our Testing that we see over here. So let's just go to the testing side. So yeah, on the testing side, we have a look at the third test, Matthew chapter 4. Let's look at the final test. And it says, and again the devil took him up. So we're reading from Matthew chapter 4 from verses 8. And again the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the reins of the world and their steam. And said to him, all these I shall give you, if you fall down and worship me. Then Yoshua said to him, Go, Hasatan, for it has been written, You shall worship Yahuwah your Lua, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and see messengers came and attended him. So, yeah, we see where the big problem comes in. 
many times, especially with great men and women of Yahuwah. All of a sudden, the power that they have gets to their head. And then they start bowing down to the things of the world, to love the world, to love the things of the world, and then they're no longer being obedient to the Father and to His ways. So the more the Father gives you, the more, you see, then they acquire more and more for themselves, and then they use and abuse that which the Father has given. And then at the end of the day, what do they do? They then don't start. They start to not serve the Father the way that He should. They start to twist His word. So instead of then, then, then you can see. Imagine people with big ministries, and then you come to them with truth. And you bring a truth like these truths, like the truth of returning back to the Sabbath. Say now you bring them the truth of you shall keep the Sabbath holy unto the Father. And you bring a big businessman, for example, maybe, that is not to work on the Sabbath day. But he's got his business that opens up on a Sabbath day. What then? Because when they were in the church system, it wasn't a sin. They went to church on Sunday. But now you start to bring the truth. And now when you start to bring the truth, that's when they want to twist the scriptures to say, well, you know what, the Sabbath is any day. Yeshua came to make the Sabbath day is now the first day of the week and not the seventh day of the week. It's now the first day of the week because he resurrected on the first day of the week. And they bring all these excuses. And why do they do this? Why do they do this? They compromise the word because they don't want to change. So I have seen with people that will reject this message. The people that reject the message of returning back to his commands and to his ways are people that will not want to be able to stop. You see, their ministry is catering for them. Their ministry caters for them. So you cannot change it. So you can send people to them to speak to them to whatever. They will not change. Why? Because their ministry is catering to their needs. But now to be able to come and say, well, now you've got to stop doing church on a Sunday and you've started, got to start doing church on a Shabbat. Well, that's not going to work because half my people go shopping on a Shabbat. And then they take Sunday, so Sunday they can come to church. But Saturday they're out there shopping on the Shabbat. So they're not going to be able to come to church on the Shabbat. Or they're sitting at, they're doing sport or whatever it is that they're doing on a Shabbat. So they're not going to come to church on a Shabbat. Because the Shabbat is being used to do other things on. So that's why it's easy to go to church on a Sunday. Because you see, Sunday is not a day that the people are well, not that it makes the difference, because nowadays they come out of church and go straight to the mall anyway. As a matter of fact, they'll even have the coffee shop inside the church, like the church I used to go to before. The coffee shop was inside the church. So you can go in now, go and buy your cappuccino and your cafe latte, everything inside the church, and go and spend your money inside the church. But it's okay. You can do that. Beloved, power, the power that we do not want to submit because he said come I put you on this big mountain worship me I give you all of this I give you all of this and you see when people have a taste of the power then they don't want to submit to the word of Yahuwah because they don't want to humble in the sense of the power they don't want to humble because they like the power. So the power is the last test because that's the last thing that comes normally with men and women of Yahuwah. Then when they start to walk in, in this power, they don't want to let go of that power because it caters to them. It makes them feel good. And the devil will give you everything you want, but just disobey him. That's all he wants. He wants you to disobey. As long as you disobey, that's what he wants of you. Just disobey. And so that is why Yoshua had to face these tests. So that today we have no excuse to say, well, I can't do this because Yoshua already had to be able to 
to face this test. When, you, when the devil comes before you and say, well, I'll give you all of this. Just serve me. Just be disobedient. Just do what I say. Just follow your doctrines of demons. Oh, just go get another scripture that counteracts that scripture that counteracts that scripture. And then it's all cool. And then you can just disobey him. You know what? We are coming to that narrow road where few are going to find it. Few. Narrows the road that leads to life. Narrows the path that leads to life. And few will find it. So for you to eat from the tree of life, which is the tree of life, is the commands. It's the commands. It was one command. It's the commands. And if we are not going to adhere to what this word says, we will, be, we will not be part of the few. We will be part of the broad way. May Abba Yahuwah bless you all. Thank you, Father, for your word. I praise and I thank you, Father, for this word that you have given us in this day. And we just want to praise you and we just want to thank you, Father, that we will be able to be those that will understand what it truly means to be tested and tried and proved faithful. Father, I thank you that your shua has already gone before us, that he's already made a way for us, and that all we need to do is to submit and surrender to you and not listen to the voice of the enemy. And even if it's going to cost us a price in our flesh, we want to be obedient to you, Father. Thank you, Father. Let us pray the ironic blessing. Yahweh bless you and keep you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Shabbat shalom.